No spoilers in the comments. Or I'm gonna cut you. Did I get you? This anime is fucking great! Now, for a while, my fans have known me as a gamer who centers around Sonic the Hedgehog and Assassin's Creed. However, for those of you that don't know, I'm as big, if not even bigger, a fan of anime and manga than I am of games. I'm what you call a super nerd. But anyway, ever since the revival of this channel, I've ruminated about doing more anime and manga stuff to complement the gaming stuff. So to start things off, let's have a spotlight series of anime or manga, and start it off with an anime adaptation of a manga almost no one has heard of. I'm good at planning! Bokudake ga Inaimachi, or better known as its translated names, The Town I Don't Live In, or Erased, is a manga series created by author-artist Sanbei K, and revolves around the genres of eerie and realistic suspense, with a slice of life setting, and a touch of the supernatural. This manga isn't too widespread, and not a lot of people have even heard of it, but seeing as how first-timers have been so far captivated by the anime debut, I doubt it'll be like that for long. So let's start off with the original premise, without major spoilers, of course. In 2006, yeah, it literally states it takes place in the year 2006, which is weird since this manga went into publication in 2012. Satoru Fujinuma is a 29-year-old struggling manga author who works at a pizza place part-time. His life is relatively normal, devoid of too much excitement, Except he has the power to rewind and replay a fraction of time over and over again to prevent disaster, what he calls a revival. The only problem is that it happens against his will, so he ends up both saving lives and creating problems for himself. So it's less of a superpower and more of a general inconvenience. As far as the manga has gone, there's no real explanation to how he got this power, but it started occurring back in his childhood, happening when a girl he knew and a close friend of his were kidnapped and murdered by a serial child murderer. He gets some memories of the event when his mother drops by for a hello, but a lot of it is still a blur. The case was never fully closed for the two of them, as they doubted the person caught was really the culprit. Soon afterwards, another tragedy befalls Satoru, and he tries to forcibly trigger a revival. It ends up working, but a bit too well. The revival sent him all the way back to his childhood in 1988, in his own childhood body, a few weeks before the aforementioned kidnapping case started. Making the most of his mistake and turning it into a once-in-a-lifetime chance, he goes to solve the case before the case even happens, to prevent tragedy altogether. Now, as of writing this review, there have been three episodes of the anime that are out, but just from these, it's easy to tell that the adaptation is in good hands. The first episode abridges a good chunk of the first few chapters, which at first is a bit of a problem, but seeing as they only cut one scene where Satoru and his co-worker Irie save a bunch of random kids, and Irie starts questioning him in order to get to the point where he warps back in time, there's not much of an issue here. Because the anime's forte is suspense, there's a lot of downtime scenes, where not much is happening other than Satoru depositing exposition, which isn't excessive, but sometimes is a bit out of place. The surprising thing is that this anime pulls it off masterfully, with a proper amount of pacing to make sure two characters aren't just staring at each other for an uncomfortable amount of time. Speaking of surprising things, the animation of this anime is top-notch. Like, really top-notch. Which is surprising, as I never pegged an adaptation of this manga, if it were ever to get one, to have that high quality of animation. Mainly because those who have read manga illustrated by the author Sanbei K, you've noticed that his work is a bit... off. Not that it's bad or anything, but much like Mori Koji, the author and artist behind Suicide Island, the art style kind of has its own flair, not like a lot of manga that tend to look the same. Like seeing both of the characters' ears at almost all times. I feel like that's Sanbei K's thing, though. It's in all of his manga. While better animation mostly takes hold in slice of life scenarios, simply because the animation doesn't have to be split by ungodly, crazy action scenes, Erased's animation quality is high enough that almost no shot looks awkwardly drawn or keyed. I'd even go so far to claim that it's one of the best looking slice of life animes I've ever seen. Now let's get into the audio quality. By the second episode, we get to see the opening for the first time, the song being performed by Asian Kung Fu Generation. This is a series about time-traveling child murder. I don't think Haruka Kanata's gonna match. But surprisingly, the opening is actually really good. And it really bothers me because I don't know why. The song they use, Re Re, sounds upbeat at first, but the song just matches with everything going on. As for background tracks, the few that I've heard comprise of softer acoustics or drone music, which is perfect for this kind of suspenseful show. The voice acting isn't anything to cough at either. It's interesting, as there are stable character types that show up in anime and manga everywhere, like the boisterous idiot who means well, or the schoolgirl whose pitch is high enough for only dogs to hear. In this anime, we get to hear actually a rare type of character. One who's dead on the inside! No, not someone who's angsty or hardcore. Someone who kind of just accepts the world he's in, but has no real feeling towards it. 
The voice actor nails Satoru's demeanor, despite it being the actor's first role. Why this is interesting is that you don't get a lot of characters like this, so it already makes the story worth looking into. Another tidbit that is more of a subtle detail than anything of real importance is that when it transfers back to 1988. They talk about games like Dragon's Quest and Final Fantasy. Not renamed knockoffs that the creator came up with to avoid copyright, it's the actual names. While the real reason for the author having the real names in there instead of fake ones isn't clear, it certainly helps the world feel more real. Fake name products kind of take the viewer out of the experience for some reason. Like all them kids playing the, their lizard's quest on them game persons at the local Wickdonald's. The only thing is that most of the scenes involve dialogue and build-up, so if you're looking for a more urgent sense of suspense or action, then this isn't really the type to watch. However, if you like the slow and simple build of dark suspense with a touch of the supernatural, along with the hilarity of a 29-year-old man and a 10-year-old body, then Erase is one anime to check out. And speaking from someone who's kept up with the manga, then don't worry, it only gets better from here. And dark. Real dark. EVERY LITTLE THING! It's gonna be alright! <laughs> so there you have your first spotlight. This is my first time doing this sort of thing, so any helpful advice in the comments would be appreciated for next time. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the anime as much as I do.